morning. My name is William Cunningham. I'm pleased to share insights into the motivation, methodology and achievements to date of M Health for Africa. In the context of Sustainable Development Goal 3, governments around the world are working towards both increasing access to and strengthening the impact of healthcare delivery. To support universal access to patient-centric health delivery, coherent strategies and enabling regulatory environments are required. Equally important, it requires appropriate skills development programs, including digital literacy, to provide the necessary foundational capacity to facilitate complementing existing medical expertise with appropriate health-related technology. Technology adoption is important in the context of strengthening impact and scaling access to healthcare, despite the significant shortfall in available medical professionals in resource-constrained environments, particularly in Africa, Caribbean and Pacific group countries. If technology is to be widely adopted in healthcare ecosystems, the minimum requirement is an appropriate electronic health record. Despite progress being made across ACP group countries in introducing electronic patient records in larger urban hospitals, paper-based registries are still the default data capture method in most primary healthcare facilities, particularly in Africa. Unfortunately, many of the health technology solutions that have been introduced by donors in recent years have tended to address specific programs they're funding, such as ART or TB, for example. Few e-health solutions to date have adopted a holistic approach reflecting the range of services needed by the local communities being served. There is now increasing realisation that using siloed health applications Applications is not sustainable, as it's having a negative impact on the continuum of care and wasting scarce resources through data fragmentation and duplication of effort. Three years ago, M Health for Africa secured funding from the European Commission Horizon 2020 Research Programme to co-design a comprehensive patient-centric health platform that's adaptable and extensible, modular and multilingual. Designed for use in resource-constrained environments around the world, M Health for Africa integrates electronic health and electronic medical record functionality with the use of medical sensors and data visualization tools at the point of care. It also supports the automatic counting of aggregate program indicator data required by the Ministries of Health, as well as SMS appointment notifications. Integration has been undertaken with the Bliss Lab system. The objective of M Health for Africa is to strengthen primary healthcare delivery in resource constrained environments by replacing over time hard copy patient registries and any siloed e health solutions that may exist. M Health for Africa is working in partnership with ministries of health, district health offices, clinic managers, and nurses in primary health care facilities in Ethiopia, Kenya, Malawi and South Africa to inform functionality and usability. We are also working with local university partners to support sustainable local capacity building. M Health for Africa aims to assist primary health care facilities to increase the quality and impact of care by strengthening the capacity of healthcare professionals to capture comprehensive histories as well as current medical conditions. This will support continuity of care between visits and informed diagnosis. It aims to support a prevention strategy by building necessary community trust to increase the frequency of contact of patients and local communities by facilitating follow-up by community health workers. By automating and significantly increasing the accuracy of aggregate program indicator data, M Health for Africa can support strengthening policy formulation and decision making by the Ministry of Health. M Health for Africa aims to strengthen the skills of, of facility staff by providing access to education materials online. 
Finally, it aims to support health education sensitization of patients and local communities and reinforce the impact of community health care workers. When developing Empath for Africa, necessary ethical approval was secured in each country. Collaborative open innovation and design science research techniques and an agile development process were applied. Qualitative data collection and ethnographic observation techniques were used during the needs requirements and the baseline study and the alpha and beta platform validation phases. We worked closely with policymakers, district health officers, clinic managers and healthcare workers to co-design and validate a number of alpha and beta iterations of the platform. This iterative approach helped refine the platform and prioritize additional functionality, usability issues, and program-related data sets. While addressing the mandatory program-related data required for use in Ethiopia, Kenya, Malawi and South Africa, when implementing medical programs such as maternal, child under 5, TB and ART, M Health for Africa was co-designed from a cross-border perspective. Rather than simply replicating country-specific paper-based registries reflecting the best medical knowledge 10, 15 or 20 years ago, M Health for Africa reflects advances in medical knowledge. By building M Health for Africa around a superset of data points incorporating national and cross border requirements, this can be easily extended to facilitate adaptation and adoption by other countries across Africa as well as around the world. Facilitating configurable, mandatory, and optional data sets will support monitoring and follow up for more complicated cases and facilitate more accurate and earlier diagnosis as we continue to evolve mHealth for Africa by incorporating decision support and other technologies. Based on extensive consultation and analysis, mHealth for Africa identified the requirement to strengthen the digital literacy skills of health workers and in intervention facilities to complement application training and general support. Those who successfully complete this training receive certification from M Health for Africa and the local university partner in that country. The initial intervention facilities in northern Ethiopia, western Kenya, southern Malawi and eastern Cape South Africa were agreed with the Ministries of Health and the District Health Offices. DHIS2 is used as the National Health Information Management System in many ACP group countries, including Kenya, Malawi and South Africa, and is currently being adopted by, South, by Ethiopia. For this reason, mHealth for Africa investigated whether it was possible for a comprehensive and extensible patient-centric multi-program health platform to be built on top of DHIS2. This offers significant benefits. M Health for Africa has developed a comprehensive and extensible patient-centric multi-program custom application on top of DHIS2. It interacts via web API with the M Health for Africa data models configured in DHIS2 for each medical program. The data model determines the program structure, its stages, sections and rules. The M Health for Africa application dynamically renders the data model for each program. This significantly reduces maintenance costs, making it easier to modify and add programs without the scarce and expensive technical resources. This design decision supports adaptation, extensibility and scalability of mHealth for Africa in resource-constrained environments. It also facilitates automatic generation of aggregate program indicator data for the Ministry of Health as well as saving facilities up to five person days per month, precious time which can be reallocated to clinical care or continuous professional medical education, M Health for Africa can guarantee access to timely, accurate and aggregate data used to inform health policy and resource allocation. Our approach to interoperability has focused on using HL7 Fire. 
initially to transfer medical sensor readings and lab requests and results to and from the patient electronic medical record. To support patient mobility and referrals, M Health for Africa will use HL Fire to support the export and import of individual medical records. M Health for Africa functionality, user interface, and supported programs have evolved significantly over the last three years. We've responded quickly to feedback received to iterations of the alpha and the beta platform. Based on the level of trust established through this co-design process, user requirements and input have also evolved in sophistication as participating stakeholders realize what has been achieved to date and expectations increase accordingly. While we initially focused on maternal and child health, once these programs have been successfully implemented, stakeholders strongly encourage us to extend functionality and program support to provide a comprehensive and integrated solution that would facilitate a holistic cradle-to-grave approach to patient care. MHealth for Africa now incorporates an extensive set of programs and functionality prioritised by participating key stakeholders, including automated counting of program indicators, SMS notifications and lab result integration. Clinic-related functionality includes setting up healthcare workers as system users and assigning program rights based on responsibility, access to patients, clinic appointments and the ability to set up SMS notifications. In terms of patient-centred functionality, this includes the patient profile, which provides access to a dashboard presenting demographic and program-specific information, appointments, risk factors, and visualisation of program-specific readings and measurements. Programmes include medical history, maternal health, family planning, cervical cancer screening, child under five, tuberculosis, ART, general outpatient department as well as specialist outpatient clinics and comprehensive patient reports are automatically generated by program and can be printed or exported for further analysis. We're currently configuring programs for diabetes, malaria and hypertension, which are the next priorities identified. Health facilities of different sizes can support different programs. Clinic managers can easily select appropriate programs, set up users and assign program-specific access rights based on their responsibilities. I'm now going to show a short demo of some of the mHealth for Africa functionality. The version I'm now demonstrating is for a health facility in Ethiopia. When the user logs in, the application shows them the health facility that they're capturing data for. One of the practical challenges that mHealth for Africa faced is supporting two different calendars, the Ethiopian and the Gregorian, without having to support two different code bases. We've addressed this through a data conversion within the mHealth for Africa application. While all dates are stored in DHIS using the Gregorian calendar, when used in Ethiopia, the dates are presented using the Ethiopian calendar. This allows us to maintain one code base while meeting Ethiopian expectations. When the health worker logs in, they're shown the patient list and access to the programs for which they have rights. I'm currently logged in as the facility manager, so I have access to maternal health, family planning, cervical cancer screening, child under five, tuberculosis, ART, general outpatient department, and specialist outpatient departments. The healthcare worker can search the list, determine the client that they want to access, and click view profile. I'm now going to go through a number of different programs. This lady is has been registered in, in quite a number of programs, but the one we're going to focus on is maternal health. So we're now in her patient profile for maternal health. We have access to her demographics. We can update her contacts as required. 
we have access to patient-specific information, so the patient overview, the stages in this case for ANC, um, postnatal delivery. We have access to reports. We can set up appointments and change the status based on attendance. And we have access to data visualization, which is dynamically rendered. So here we see the BP that was collected for each of the ANC visits. We have access to the SBO2 and the pulse. We have access to fundal height, as well as mapping of temperature, weight and abdominal circumference. Here we can see that the lady has attended all of the visits to do with the maternal cycle. And the healthcare worker can access reports looking at different views of this data. Now we're going to look at a patient who's registered in the Child Under 5 programme. So here we have access to the child's information and we have access to the father's profile as he's already registered in this health facility. In terms of the programme specific data, we've divided this into a number of repeatable stages. So at birth consultation when the child is born, then the other elements of the programme are repeatable. So when the child is brought for um, three monthly growth and nutrition, this is added whenever the child comes to the clinic. If the child has an illness such as diarrhea or measles, this can be added as a consultation. When the child is brought for the immunization, each time they come for immunization, this is added as a visit and the appropriate vaccines added to the child's profile. When they are of the age to have vitamin A and deworming, these visits are registered. So here you can see all of the appointments that this child has attended. In terms of the data visualization, we have mapped the WHO weight for age, and weight for height, length for age, and we also mapped MUC. This allows the health worker to see the development of the child's progress over time. Now we're going to look at a patient that's registered in TB. So the TB program has evolved over time based on interaction with specialist clinics and hospitals that provide TB services. So some of the components of the TB program are specific to a hospital and some of them are specific to both hospitals and primary health care facilities. If IPT therapy is undertaken, consultations can be added. In the case of a family member that needs to be tracked for um, association with the TB client, they will be set up, the family member will be set up as part of the TB contact management program. Then within um, normal TB screening, if it's voluntary or if it's as a result of TB contact, um, the nurse sets up a TB screening and here we see the summary of that TB screening. If the patient then is confirmed to have the condition, then they move to TB consultation. So every time they have a consultation, a new visit is added. Here we have a summary of the visits and we can go in and change them and add new visits. In the case where the patient becomes multi-drug resistant, we can then add consultations for category four. Here we have access to all the consultations that the person has attended and we do visualization based on blood pressure, which is dynamically rendered, temperature and weight. Now we're going to look at a patient who's registered in the ART program. So as you can see, the, the structure of the patient profile is the same in each program. So this makes the system very familiar for the healthcare workers. So we've got the demographics, we've got the patient specific information, the appointments and the visualization. So here, this patient started with a voluntary ART consultation. Then it was confirmed that the person has the condition, and now they've gone through a number of ART consultations. In terms of the patient overview, this is always um, program specific. So here it shows you the last vital signs, and it shows you the summary of where the person's at in terms of their treatment. So this al always represents the last data that has been collected. MHealth for Africa has introduced the use of medical sensors at the point of care to support triage and to support readings related to pulse and blood oxygen using the oximeter. 
blood pressure, blood sugar le levels using the glucometer, temperature, weight, and hemoglobin. This shows you the interface of the custom Android application. The nurse logs into the Android application and it interacts with the mHealth for Africa data model using HL7 Fire. It undertakes user authentication and presents the healthcare worker with the patient list and the programs for which they have access. It retrieves and synchronizes the patient list. The nurse then puts the sensor on the patient and the sensor reading is displayed on the Android device using Bluetooth LE. And then when the nurse uh, presses save, it passes the sensor readings to the electronic medical record using HL7 Fire. The Health for Africa Consortium brings together multidisciplinary research and innovation expertise. To date, we have now in a position where we have a state-of-the-art patient-centric health information system, which is designed to improve primary and tertiary healthcare level delivery in resource-constrained environments. It works in both an offline and an online mode. It's co-designed and validated with ministries of health, district health offices and clinicians in Ethiopia, Kenya, Malawi and South Africa. It's in use on a day-to-day -day basis in a mix of hospitals and primary health care facilities. And we have configured a wide range of medical programs based on analysis of paper-based systems and inputs from clinicians to maximize the use of an electronic medical record. It's available in English and French, and we can add other languages as required. We are now validating the system functionality in the programs with health facilities and countries that weren't involved in the initial co-design process. And we're looking for support to scale implementation in existing beneficiary countries and in new countries. Thank you very much for your attention. You're welcome to follow up with us by email and to visit our website.